Hello, and welcome to this session on building agile teams. I'm going to start with an assertion, and that is calling something a team doesn't make it one. It requires a lot of time and effort and conscious thought to create the conditions that enable people to work well together. And of course, it makes it even more difficult if people aren't meeting and they're working remotely. But there is a lot of research on teams and remote working which we can draw upon. And one of the major findings that emerged is that the most effective teams tend to be empowered, small, agile teams, and they were proven to produce better results, particularly during times of crisis and uncertainty. And so these small, empowered teams were more innovative, they were more agile, more willing to experiment, to embrace change, more responsive and delivered better results. And actually working in an empowered team is not just important for agility and innovation, but it meets a fundamental need that we all have for a feeling of autonomy, a sense of control, a sense of mastery, that we're learning and developing and growing and doing new things. So what should you do as a leader in this new working model, which is probably here to stay? What would I recommend for you and the teams that you're leading? So the first thing I'm going to say is it's important to build and to maintain small functional or cross-functional teams and to task them to focus on the current or emerging needs, particularly where it relates to the client's experience. So these small groups of people know what they're looking for in terms of an outcome, not an input. They have very clear boundaries and clear accountability. And then once they have that clarity, you empower them to make their own decisions, the small scale decisions that don't need reference to you. And they only come to you if something is mission critical or likely to have wider consequences. You're probably doing this already because you'll have had to learn to trust your people more because they've all been working from home, as indeed you have. And I hope you've been pleased to see how capable they are, how they've stepped up to the challenges, what they've achieved. You might even be surprised at just how they've over exceeded any expectation you had. And of course, I think it was Ernest Hemingway who said, the only way to know whether you can trust somebody is to trust them. So once you've empowered them, it's really important to step back to let go and to leave them. Avoid any tendencies to want to take control or to micromanage. And it's these small empowered teams which will enable you to be more agile and more successful as an organization. The second thing I'm going to suggest is you encourage collaboration. Um, the COVID crisis has told us that no one scientific or medical establishment is going to come up with the solution, a vaccine or a cure to the COVID um, pandemic that we're involved in at the moment. So similarly, within your organisations, no one team is necessarily going to have all the answers. So encourage them to collaborate across the organisation and to network inside, but also out. So to draw on um, best practice and to share knowledge from multiple perspectives. This way of collaborating with others has two other benefits. It increases the sense of inclusion and it strengthens relationships because people have to have personal contact in order to collaborate and that builds trust and that enables better solutions and more creativity. And if you see collaborative behavior, make sure you recognize and reward it because that will encourage other people to do the same. The third thing I'm going to say is make team time matter Use it wisely when you bring the team together. Think about what can they collectively to do together which they can't do apart. So for instance, get rid of the reporting in, it's tedious and it's boring, and use the team time, for instance, for problem solving. So a member of the team brings a task or a challenge they're facing and uses the power of the team to explore the issue, to identify or unearth new information, to present different perspectives and better solutions or use team time for an after action review, a term from the army. Once a week, bring the team together and say, what's gone well, what have we learned? What's not gone so well, what have we learned? Because this encourages transparency and candor, and it creates an environment of psychological safety where people feel happy to talk about to making mistakes and what they've learned from them. Because again, this was a factor of successful teams. Use the team time to make everybody feel heard, Google in Project Aristotle found that the most effective teams provided a voice and a space for all perspectives. And lastly, use different formats. 
So sometimes bring the team together for a five minute pulse meeting. What are the priorities? What are we working on? What's mission critical? And other times you might want to bring the team together to socialize or perhaps to celebrate or to focus on the future or for learning and development. Get each member of your team to teach everybody else in something that they're good at. Upskilling is a vital aspect of learning from each other. So there are my three things. Build and empower teams to focus on important projects. Encourage them to collaborate and network inside and out and make team time matter and deliver value. So apply those to your teams wherever they are and I hope they work. Good luck.